Man, I'm on a roll tonight. So we're going to do one that's actually in section 2.7. Uh, um, I'm sorry, it's actually in 2.6 uh, trig limits. But uh, I like to do it separately. To me, it just makes more sense. It's called the squeeze theorem. Um, it frequently shows up with trig functions, but it's not always with trig functions, okay? And so it's a very easy thing to do now that we have the advent of a calculator, okay, graphing calculator. In my day, when I was a kid and first learned how these things, there would always be like, okay, you, it's easy to set it up. Oh my gosh, it's the easiest thing on the planet to understand. And I'm not joking when I say that. I'm not, I'm not being hyperbolic. I just That's a fact. However, <laughs> there's a big however, friends. Uh, however, um, finding the appropriate other functions is tricky. So what we're going to have is this. You're going to have some function that'll be, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't even know. I'm trying to decide what it's doing here right now. Whatever. And I, I'm interested here at x equals a. Okay. You know, it looks like the limit's zero, but I, maybe I can't be sure. And you'll see why in a minute. Some pretty classic reasonings for this. What you could do is you could find a function. Let's call it f of x. Such that, let's, let's call this one g of x. Such that f of x is always less than or equal to g of x. I mean, anybody can do that, okay? Well, is that all, Jay? Well, just hold the phone, just about. And you need to pick another function. Let's call it h of x. Where h of x is always bigger than or equal to g of x. So that's the first thing, is finding these two functions, f and h. That's tricky sometimes. Without a calculator, it's almost impossible. Almost. Okay? And so with a graphing calculator, it's pretty easy to see. You're like, oh, pff, duh, there it is. But sometimes it's a little tricky. But here's the deal. Here's the little proviso. The limit as x approaches a of f of x must equal the limit as x approaches a of h of x. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that this one and this one have the same limit? They must. I'm choosing them because of that. Well, wait a minute. If they have the same limit, if the limit of this guy, stupid pen, if the limit of this guy is equal to the limit of this guy, what does that say about g of x's limit? It must be the same. That's it. That's the squeeze theorem in a nutshell. And you're like, well, why would I need that? Well, allow me to demonstrate, friend. You may run into this one in a dark alley some night. And you will want to have your, what is it, garlic? Your clove of garlic with you or some such. Um, it might be a situation like that uh, where, what's it doing around zero? I literally have no idea. It might be a situation like this guy. Uh, x and then times the absolute value of x. It'd be nice if I could see. Oops. Uh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there we go. Absolute, oops, there it is. Absolute value of x. Yeah. Okay, that's one right there where you could look at it and you can be like, say, hey, what's going on here? That's kind of weird. What's happening as x approaches zero, for instance, or something of this nature? You could think of it in a variety of different ways. Um, you could move the absolute value out there. I'm sorry, I lied to you. You could move x, absolute value of sine of x. Maybe that's what I wanted. I think it's closer. Uh, but the idea is, is like, for instance, what happens is you approach these values here, right? It's zero. And there's some interesting things that are just, they're a little weird. And so the ones I want to show you, there's two or three that I want to show you that are pretty cool, but they're also kind of strange. And so I will uh, demonstrate to them to you, and then we'll, we'll see where we go from there with them. Uh, you'll know a squeeze theorem problem 
in the mo for the most part because when you see one and you look at the graph which i always recommend you look at the graph first i just to me is the easiest way to go about them um when you see one it'll be quite obvious to you that i need to use a squeeze theorem on it so for instance the limit as x approaches zero of the tangent of x times the cosine of the sine of 1 over x. <gasps> that is inside of that. Let's go see what it looks like. So we'll do several of these. They're ter not terribly hard, but one can confuse one's self if one is not careful. Okay, cool. And so weird stuff's going on there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oh, that's weird. Oops. Zoom in. Zoom in. Oh, that's kind of creepy, dude. We've got some creepy, weird stuff going on there. Am I right? We've got this idea where it's, it's following in along a line, if you will, right along the top of these little dudes. And then it looks like it's bouncing back out. And it's kind of bouncing on the bottom side of that. It's pretty clear the limit should be zero. It's pretty clear that one over zero is a problem inside, yes? Okay. So what am I going to do about that? I need a function that's always bigger than that top function, that sits on top of this function. A person could say, well, Jay, what about x? Ooh, that's not going to quite work because that kind of cuts through it. You're with me on this? It cuts through it. I need to have a function that's always bigger than the orange function. Now, it clearly equals on the other side. Yes, it clearly equals along this side. You're like, well, what about absolute value of x? Does that fit the bill? Well, clearly over here in negativesville, it sits above the orange line, so it fits the bill over here. And on the positive side, it's clearly equal to on top of these bumps. Now, if that bothers you, and it bothers some people, a guy could put in an extra value like this, which jacks it up, because then it is clearly greater than, okay, the orange function. And then, uh, then you could say, well, what about negative 1.2 absolute value of x? Well, that's always less than. Now, what do you know about the limit of this guy of absolute value of 1.2 oh, 1 absolute value of x as x approaches 0? Well, you know the limit is 0. And what about the black line? You know its limit is also 0. And because the purple is always bigger than the orange, bigger than or equal to, and because the black is always less than or equal to the orange, and because those two functions have the same limit at zero, the orange must also have the same limit at zero. Okay? That's it. That's all there is to that. Okay? One needn't get terribly close to the value of the function in question. You, you don't have to be like right on top of it. You said be close enough. Okay? Now, you can use this function for anything. Like, for instance, uh, well, x squared. What is the limit of x squared as x approaches 0? Well, any idiot knows it's 0. But here's x equals, here it is, here's x squared. Okay. Give me a function that is less than x squared. All right. Uh, I feel like y equals, oops, y equals 0.2x squared. Looks like this fella. Right? And it seems to me that y equals 7x squared looks like this dude. And so when I see that, I see that 7x squared is always bigger than x squared, except at 0, obviously, right? And it's always, x squared is always greater than 0.2x squared, again, except again, of course, at that. So if I take the limit, the limit as x approaches 0 of this guy, and the limit as x approaches 0 of this guy, and the limit as x approaches 0 of this guy, I get 0 is less than or equal to x squared is less than or equal to 0. And the only way that can be true is if what? I'm sorry, not the limit, not x squared. Just a minute. I forgot my limit. Sorry about that, friends. Well, if the limit as x approaches 0 of this guy is between 0 and 0, well, it's not between 0 and 0. It is 0. Okay? I'm going to pause you for one second while I do one. 
All right, so um, another one that comes to mind, and we'll do this function several more times over the course of the book, and that is the um, <coughs> sign the limit of the sine of x over x. Now, in this section, we'll actually talk about what this limit is. We'll look at the graph and see that, in fact, it's 1. But the limit, oops, we'll find that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is equal to 1. That's what we'll find. Okay. But sine of x over x. Um, oh, just a minute. All right. So back to here. And ba-boom. Sine of x. Divide by x. And zoom out a little bit. Well, wow. That looks vaguely like the sine function, doesn't it? It looks vaguely like the sine function. Not exactly, but almost. So what would sine look like on this guy? Let's find out. So what would sine x look like? Would that be above it or below it, for instance? I don't know. Oh, not sine. I'm sorry. It looks like cosine. <laughs> what am I thinking? I'm not even drunk. I can't even blame it on that. Oh, shoot. But one might think I am by making my stupid mistakes. There we go. Yeah. So you're like, cosine. Well, not quite. The rule says it has to be less than or equal to. Ooh, good try. Might I suggest 1 minus x squared? Hmm? And you could show that it's always less than. You can show that. How would you show that? Well, you could show it with some graphs. Uh, you can show it with some some uh, some data. You could also show it with some algebra. So let me show you what I would do back in the day. <laughs> if you multiply this, you're going to get sine of x, right, is equal to, if you times over here, you're going to get x minus x squared. Okay? And that's what these two, the, you set them equal to one another, yes? Okay? And, well, when you think about this for a minute, all right, so, so, what, hap oops, so what happens when you do that? Well, at some point, they are going to be obviously equal to one another, it looks like, right, in terms of that. So you think, well, how am I going to do that? Well, x minus x squared has a 0 here and a 0 at 1, okay? And it looks like this, okay? And you're thinking, well, okay, but how high up does it go? That's a good question. So at a half, that's where the middle is right there, right? It's going to be a half minus a quarter, which is a quarter, so it comes up to a quarter right there. Now the sine of x starts here, okay? And it continues and grows up until it gets over here to pi over 2, which is 1.57. And so it grows like this, okay? And so when I need to do this, I kind of just vaguely need to show that that's always going to be on top of that guy, okay? And so we know this guy reaches a maximum at a half. So a person could plug in some values and show that that's true. You could also go back to over here. Now, this is not 1927, okay? So you can zoom in, zoom, and zoom, zoom, zoom as far as you want on that guy. You could also just graph the sine of x. And you could also graph x minus x squared. And you could then zoom in on that guy. And you will see that that is always bigger than that. Okay. You could also do it with a table, for instance, in Excel. And you could take values between 0 and, you know, as I say, 0 and, say, 0.5 when this one's a maximum. And you could take values from the purple minus values from the black. It'll always be a positive difference because the purple is always bigger. The only place where they're equal is here at 0, yes? And that's the only place they had to be equal, right? We only had to have one place. So let's zoom back out again. Now I need a function that sits on top of that. Well, I'm lazy. I'm really lazy. So I'm just going to use this one. There you go. Now, it's quite clear that, that this function here, uh, sine of x over x, lies between oops, x squared plus 1 and 1 minus x squared. I mean, that's just that's obvious from the graph. But and we also know that the limit as x approaches 0 
of 1 minus x squared. We know what that is. We know it's 1. And I can take the limit of all sides at the same time. I don't know what this is yet. And I take the limit of this guy as x approaches 0. And But I do know that this limit is oops, not 0, you moron. It's 1. It's 1. It's 1. This one is 1. And the limit that I don't know is between 1 and 1. Ergo, this limit must equal 1. That's what we're saying. Okay? That's what we're saying. That's what the squeeze theorem says. Okay? Again, the only proviso, this function here must be bigger than or equal to this guy. This guy must be less than or equal to this guy. And these two must share the same limit. If you have that, boom, that's the squeeze there. Can't get any easier.